Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing SK Telecom stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. SK Telecom is a wireless telecommunications operator. It is part of the SK Group. The company is headquartered in South Korea and was founded in 1984. It went public in 92 and currently trades on the New York, Korean, London, Munich, Deutsche Börse, and Mexican stock exchanges. It is South Korea's largest wireless carrier. They control about half of the entire market. The company expanded into the landline market by acquiring Hanaro Telecom in 2008. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company. 20 billion market cap, they're trading at $31 a share, and they have 643 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have positive free cash flow each year, peaking in 2020 at 1.9 billion. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was 2.3 billion up to 2.8 billion, then dropping way down to 790 million, then back up to 1.3 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's pretty steady and growing, 15.8 billion to 16.8 billion. Revenue is a lot smoother than net income because net income has a lot of accounting things in there, mainly other income and expenses, which can make the numbers pretty wild. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in South Korean ones, but I converted them to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet. The top line is the revenue, the sales. That was 18.6 trillion ones in 2020. Below that is the cost of revenue, these are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue, and they had the lowest cost of revenue in 2020. So it looks like they're becoming more efficient. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, which was of course the highest in 2020. Below that is operating expenses, and then operating income. Their 2020 number was pretty similar to 2017, but it was much higher than 2019. They pay 400 billion of interest on their debt, that's the most interest they pay in the past four years. A little more than 2019. A lot more than 2017. Then you have other income and expenses. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was the highest in 2018. But when you look at the income statement, you should focus on operating income. That's a better indicator of how the company's doing as opposed to net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. 2020, they generated the most operating cash flow by far. 5.8 trillion ones. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had the most free cash flow in 2020, a lot higher than 2019. Since they had so much operating cash flow in 2020, they bought back a lot of stock that year. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. In 2020, they issued a similar amount of debt as they paid down. In 2019, they paid off more debt than they issued. In 2017 and 18, they issued a similar amount of debt as they paid off. It looks like they also issued 300 billion of capital stock in 2019. When they did that, they diluted the current shareholders. Let's look at the capital structure. $21 billion of equity, $11 billion of debt. They're 66% equity, 34% debt. Their net debt is 8.3 billion and their WAC is 6.8%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 25 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $23 billion. We divide that by 643 million shares. 
and we get a calculated stock price of $35. They're trading at $31, so they're trading at 11% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a lot higher than me. They're at $58 a share. This is the stock price the last five years, so it looks like it's trading at its all-time high. The stock has done really well in the past year. They pay a 3.2% dividend yield. The industry averages 3.7%. And analysts are forecasting their dividend to grow to 3.3% in the next five years. Their bait is 0.54, so the stock moves about half the market. The stock has gone up 64% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 44%. The 52-week low is 18, the high is 32. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 300,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 642 million shares outstanding, 436 million are on float, 10% are held by institutions, and a very small percent of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 68%, while its industry went up 43%, and the market went up 53%. In the past three years and five years, this stock has underperformed its industry and the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 20%, while its industry grows 29% and the market 18%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 4%, its industry 4.5%, and the market 10%. In the past five years, their earnings decreased 5% annually, while its industry increased 17%, and the market increased 12%. In the last year, their earnings grew 71%, its industry decreased 11%, and the market increased 9%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $16,500 today. That's a 5.16% annual return. The biggest shareholder is their parent company, SK Holdings, at 30%, then National Pension, Citigroup, Macquarie, and BlackRock. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 15.0, so investors are paying $15 for $1 of earnings. They also have a good price to sales ratio of 1.2 and a good price to book of 0.9. Their return on invested capital is only 3%. Their interest coverage ratio is 3.5, ROE of 6%, and their current ratio is 1.1. And most of their current assets are in cash, receivables, and prepaid assets. They do seem to be well capitalized. They had $1.9 billion of free cash flow. They have over $500 million of working capital. And they paid almost $650 million in dividend payments. So they have about $1.8 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 11 companies in the same industry as SK. And if SK has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. They have really solid price multiples relative to the average in the industry. They have a good current ratio. Their ROE is a little low. They're lower than average in debt. And they're much smaller than the average company at 20 billion market cap. Average is 76 billion. And their dividend is a little lower than the average. So to summarize, I have them trading at 11% discount. This is a pretty good sized company. It controls half of South Korea's cell phone market, which is a really important industry that's not going away anytime soon. And they put up really good numbers and have great ratios. I rank their free cash flows 9 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.